In this video, I would like to talk to you guys about uh, some of the things you can do with the extrude command. For the most part, I'm sure you guys have used extrude uh, in NX, but maybe some people coming from another CAD software package like uh, Inventor or SolidWorks, those, you may not know all the little things that you can do with the extrude command in NX. And maybe I'll give you a few little tricks that you didn't know were possible. Uh, so I'm going to start out with just doing some basic extrude stuff with the simple sketch and we'll go back to doing something a little more complicated in a little bit. Uh, so anytime you go into the extrude command, you have options uh, as far as what you're selecting. So you got your selection intent uh, dialog box up here. And if you hit the down arrow on that, you have several different options of ways that you can uh, select sketch curves. Uh, depending on how you pick these, uh, changes how the extrusion will react if you make a change to the sketch. If you use single curve and come out here and select the whole profile and extrude it up and then come back and edit your sketch and you decide you want to extrude a hole with that and hit finish sketch, when you're done, that circle is not part of the extrusion because I did not select it when I did my single curve. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. Let's change that uh, to feature curves. Now when I select the sketch, it, sketch, it selects all the curves in the sketch. And then anytime I go back into that sketch and make any changes to it, It automatically adds those curves to the uh, curves that control the extrusion. Okay, so pay attention to that when you're uh, doing your extrusions. Pay attention to your sele your selection intent because that really has a big uh, part in how that extrusion reacts when you modify the the sketch. There are times when you maybe don't want it to. Uh, go ahead and include those holes. So at that point, you could change it to a different one. You could do connected curves and just do the outside and then extrude the others separately. The connected curves one will update if I went and changed the outer profile. So let's say I put a notch in here and turn that out real quick and hit finish sketch. That updates because it's part of the connected curve profile that I selected. But if I uh, go and add anything else that's not part of that. Let's see if I add some more circles. Still doesn't update because it's not part of that outside profile. So anytime you're doing extrude, again, uh, pay attention to what your selection intent is. Something you can do with the extrude command in NX also, you can select edges of uh, existing objects. So if I want to do face edges, Say I wanted to extrude this whole face. Let's actually just do this face. So I can extrude that face. It just go ahead and it selects all the edges of that as a defining string for my sketch. And then I can create that extrusion. You can also extrude just single faces or single edges. So if you wanted to do single curve and you just want to do a, make a surface that sticks up from this edge, I can select that and then decide what direction I want it to go and then create an extrusion. I could use that surface to trim something too or to start another sketch on or any number of things that you might need just a, a regular surface for. Okay, so those are some things you can do with the extrude command as far as the profile goes. All right, so some other things we can do. When we extrude, we also have an option to select a vector. By default, it wants to uh, use the direction that is perpendicular to the sketch plane or to the set of curves. Uh, sometimes if you're extruding things that are not planar objects, if you're doing something that's a three-dimensional uh, curve, uh, it'll kind of decide what direction it thinks you want. So you have an option though to define the extrude direction. So let's say I want to extrude this at a 40 degree angle. I have a, a data axis here that I'm going to use. 
So I pick my profile and then go down to the next section. This talks about direction and I can pick, change my selection intent to inferred. Uh, I can pick that axis. So now it's going to follow that axis and extrude it in that direction. It's also associative to that axis. So if I change that angle, let's call it 30 degrees, and hit OK. Now you can see the axis has changed and my extrusion has a much sharper angle on it now uh, because it's associative to that datum axis. So that's something else that you can do in NX with the extrude command. Uh, you can define the direction uh, of the extrusion by an axis, by an edge, um, by the normal direction from a planar object. So there's a lot of different things that you can select. Uh, if you hit this guy here, uh, you can change the selection. You can also use points, uh, curves, and a vector. So there's a lot of different options here, but just know that you can always change the direction of the extrusion uh, with that option. All right, so something else that I haven't talked about yet if we edit this extrusion. Uh, we have two different values here, and uh, this may be different than some other CAD packages too. Uh, I've got a start distance and an end distance. So these two values are measured from the defining string uh, for our section of our extrusion. So from the sketch or whatever it is you're extruding, that's where it's measured from. So you don't always have to start at the same plane that the sketch is on or your, your curves are on. So you can change this to any number and you can actually have them reverse around too and start one at the start distance at three and the end distance at two. Okay, so the start distance is just measuring how far away from that sketch plane or that uh, profile of the section that we're extruding, what, how far from that plane it is, and then uh, makes the solid model from there. All right, a couple more options in the limits part of the extrude command. Uh, so we can also do what's called a symmetrical extrusion, which is every CAD program seems to have this. Um, NX maybe measures it a little differently. Uh, so the distance is going to be measured in both directions from your profile. So this object is actually four inches tall. So it measures it two in each direction. So that's something you have to be aware of, also coming from another CAD package that measures that as the total height. Um, so keep that in mind. All right, now there's also an option. On occasion, we want to make an extrusion, and we want it to end at another object that we already have created. So I want this extrusion to stop at this curved surface. So there's a couple ways to do that in the extrude command, and there's also a way to do it outside of the extrude command, but uh, today we're just focusing on extrude. So I have one option here called until next, and this is going to find the next object that it passes through and trim it to that. So you can see right now it's got a nice curved top to it that matches that other surface. I can use until selected, which means that I just pick where I want it to trim it to. So it's the same concept, except now I can have it pass through other objects. It doesn't go just until the first one that it runs into. I can select which one I want. So if I had more things on the screen and it was passing through some of them, uh, I could pick the surface that I wanted to trim it to. The third option is until extended. So let me change something here and show you what the difference is. So let's say that whatever this is doesn't actually pass through or pass over my extrude uh, profile. Okay, so if I try to do until next, it doesn't find anything. It's got an error down here because it doesn't pass through anything. If I try to do until selected and pick this surface, it's going to give me the same error. It says it's unable to trim because it doesn't physically pass through it. If I do the next one that's called until extended, 
it will extend this object until it passes all the way through the extrusion to calculate what the shape of the extrusion, the, the trimmed surface would be on it. So that one works uh, when the trim surface does not completely overlap your extrusion. So that's something that you can use uh, probably more often, honestly, than until it's selected. Uh, because if you're working on something and you change it, and move it so that it doesn't pass through it completely. If you used until selected, it's going to give you an error when you update it. If you use until extended, you can make that change and it still will trim to it no matter what happened to the uh, to the overlap of the two objects. All right, the next section down in your extrude dialog box is going to be the Boolean operations. Um, so usually by default, this is set to inferred when you first come into the program. And what inferred will try to do is decide based on what you're doing and what you have on the screen, whether you want to unite or subtract. Okay, so this is kind of letting the system decide what it is you're doing. It doesn't always do the best job. Uh, let's try to put them into the other object and hit apply. So it does figure out that we want to subtract them. And then when you go to edit that extrusion, it shows up as a subtract. So inferred uh, is on by default and occasionally that one causes people some confusion when they first get into the program. They can't understand why uh, it's automatically uniting or subtracting things from their object. Um, and occasionally if you have more than one thing on the screen, which I'll show you here in a second, uh, it doesn't always know what to do with that. So let's extrude just one this time and have it on, uh, we're going to put it on none. When you have it on none, it just creates it. So it doesn't unite it or subtract it from anything. It just makes a separate solid object that's all on its own. So I'm going to hit apply. Now if I come back and do inferred on this one, what it's going to do is try and decide which body you want to to unite it or subtract it to, or it will just create it. So if I don't select anything and hit apply, it just creates it. So it's at set to none. If when I extrude it and it's set to inferred, I come down here and select body. It wants me to select which object I want it to either unite or subtract from. So it's going to have to be an object that it's actually touching or passing through for it to work. If I select this guy, it's going to give me an error. If I select this one and hit apply, you can see it just united it. Okay, so you got other options there though. You got uh, unite, subtract, and intersect, So and none. So if you don't want it to unite or subtract anything, you can select the none option. Um, so keep that in mind. Anytime you're making an extrusion also, and it won't let you finish, so let's say we have this set to unite. It needs me to select which object I have want to unite it to because now I have more than one. If you only have one object, it just automatically highlights the only thing that it can unite it to. But once you have more than one of those options, uh, it's going to have to have you tell it which one you're going to unite it to. So you can't finish this extrusion if you have it set to unite and haven't selected a body. So that's another thing I've seen people uh, not understand what it's asking for. Also, one other little tip. Down here in the uh, bottom left-hand corner, is the Q line on NX and it's what it's doing there is it's telling you what it needs. So it says select body to unite with. That's exactly what the problem is right now. Okay. So it tell, it's telling me what it needs for, in order to continue with this command. So if you're ever lost and don't know what it's asking for, look down here and see if you can figure out what that says and uh, what it means, what it needs you to do next before you can finish your command. So now if I go out here and select that, it's already done. It's ready to go on and hit OK. Some of you that are new to NX, when you first go into the extrude command, you might have a different looking dialog box. You might only see down to the Boolean operations. Um, so 
what you need to do if you want to see some of the other options I'm going to show you next, you're going to want to hit the little uh, settings dialog options button up here and change this to extrude more. And when you do that, you get more options of things that you can do with the extrude command.